That's why I've gravitated away from thinking that competing with other people was a healthy form of motivation. Because you are not living their life, and they're not living yours. Whereas when you lay out an objective for your own good, personalized and tailored to your goals, dreams, and everything that you want to work towards, something that has your name engraved in it, where no one else on this planet can claim it as their own, there will only be one thing keeping you from getting that trophy, and that's you. Welcome to this week's episode of Wide Awake, a talk show where I discuss topics that I feel need more attention if we're going to improve our view on life. Last week, I discussed how finding your why directly correlates with productivity, and today we'll be looking at a new topic that I think can help us all avoid a certain amount of stress inflicted on us by our surroundings. People ask me all the time, Drew, how can I live a happier life? Okay. No one really asked me that, but I'm sitting on a bombshell that can free your life of stress and bring you more happiness and confidence in your own lives. So since no one has asked me that yet, I thought I would hop on here in front of all you lovely people to listen. Because at the end of the day, I wanna help our viewers find that peace of mind. And with a combination of research and life experience, I believe that if you take the time to fully tune in to my message today, you will have a changed outlook on your situation and improve your overall being. Now my only question is, are you ready? If you were to compile your life, everything you do, everything you're good at, all the mistakes you have made, how many people you know, your level of progress at school, your fashion taste, all into a resume for anyone to see, what do you think they would do with that information? Better yet, if you had access to your friends' resumes, what would you be doing while reading through their own lives? There is something that has been embedded inside all of us. Something that I think is a natural act, but one that has become hard to manage with the rise of technology and social media. And I believe that one thing, when controlled, can be a tool for greatness, but too often I see has a crippling power to leave a lot of people feeling lost. I'm referring to the act of comparing ourselves to others. I feel like it has become so easy for us to compare ourselves to others and easily become weighed down by the accomplishments of others, especially if things aren't going too hot in our own lives. And for those who recognize comparisons but may be doing okay for themselves or even thriving, it can be easy for comparing to become competing. You may be doing good, but are you doing better than the guy next to you? There is such a delicate line between comparing and competing in my eyes. And here's what I think separates the two. Comparing is putting two things side by side and seeing which one is better, taller, prettier, wealthier, happier, separating the qualities of each. Competing is putting two things against one another, each with their own properties that make them unique in their own way and seeing which one outperforms the other. Now, even I hear that, and find both statements a little bit depressing. One option makes it seem like you have no control over the situation. When you are being compared or comparing yourself to someone, it's typically over things that you can't really change, at least not at the moment. The other option at least grants you a little bit of control, but can lead to a devastating outcome, losing. When you compete with someone, you can do everything in your power to come on top, but still fall short. For this reason, I want to introduce a subcomponent of competition, which is competition with yourself. And before I get more into that, I want to give you my overall view on competition and why my views have shifted in recent years. There's still a part of me that can hear a topic like this and argue the fact that competition with others is just a form of motivation. But I worry about competition with others because of the fact that traditionally when you compete with someone, there's a common award for the winner of that competition. This is what I think is damaging for someone who's always looking to be better than others. That award probably isn't what's best for that person. And they are constantly going around competing for trophies that have nothing to do with their own lives and are not doing any good for what they're actually working towards. Whereas when you lay out an objective for your own good, personalized and tailored to your goals, dreams, and everything that you want to work towards, something that has your name engraved in it, where no one else on this planet can claim it as their own, there will only be one thing keeping you from getting that trophy, and that's you. That's why I've gravitated away from thinking that competing with other people was a healthy form of motivation. Because you are not living their life, and they're not living yours. And frankly, they probably don't care about yours to begin with. 
So why are you wasting so much effort over what someone else is doing? I would much rather be confident in what I'm working towards. Develop a customized plan that works for me, achieve what I set out to do, and be an inspiration to others. There are people that I look up to that inspire me, but I use how they carry themselves and apply them to my own life because I see them as someone who achieved what they wanted. And if I can carry myself like them, then maybe I can achieve what I want too. The point of this episode is not for me to get up here and say that you're standing in your own way or that you need to try harder if you don't want to be a bum. That's not it at all. We just need to keep a certain level of focus and be better tomorrow than we were today. I have faith in the people watching this right now that they can take this information and apply it to their own lives and wake up confidently that they're in control of their own path and that they don't have to constantly compare with others because you can look at them and realize that it's just not worth your time. The most confident people on this planet are the ones that can identify someone putting up a front, chuckle to themselves and not pay any attention to that person because frankly they look like a fool. But the most meaningful people on this planet are the ones who can recognize someone else who is struggling and be that light for someone else who needs it. Which person are you gonna be?